Hi there, it's Tasim from VoiceFlow. Welcome to another tutorial video. Today we're going to be covering the carousel step. So in our previous video we talked about the card step and how you're able to present rich piece of media information in your chatbot conversations using cards. Now if you remember from our previous video, um, if we've actually played this specific card step with multiple cards, you can see that each card that shows up comes in a linear fashion row by row. Now imagine if you wanted to have a gallery of cards. Um, this totally starts to become unscalable if you have multiple cards and it starts cascading from a user perspective. It's hard for the user to navigate through the information and it's also difficult for um, building this out. So actually, the solution to this is using the carousel step. The carousel step is essentially a sliding ga gallery of information presented to your user usually when you want to provide more information than which fits your screen. And that's a perfect way to use it. Um, here's some examples of how carousels are being used in, in, in the industry. Um, you can present information, you can present buttons, um, and you can present a sliding gallery. And you can see this from this image over here. Now to actually use the uh, carousel step, you would essentially just need to go to the talk section in your chatbot project and drag a carousel step uh, into your canvas. I have one already on my canvas right now, so let's actually start to play with it. And let's actually use this example we have up here to actually present it in a more carousel friendly format. So first and foremost, I'm gonna add my images. Similar to the card step, this essentially is sections of cards that you can essentially add to your canvas. Um, finally, you can give your card a title, so I'm gonna call this New York. And you can give it a description as well, similar to cards. This is the concrete jungle. And then you can also add buttons to your, to your uh, card, um, to your carousel, uh, to the card in your carousel, similarly to how you can do uh, with normal cards. So enter the concrete jungle. Perfect. So you can see that you can give uh, buttons and you can add multiple buttons as well. You can say exit the concrete jungle. and so on and so forth. Now, this is just one button. If we wanted to add another card, uh, we can actually uh, navigate to the Add Card button and add your second card. So I'm gonna also use uh, San Francisco. And while that loads up, this is the Golden Gate. And similarly, you can give um, you can give different buttons as well. Uh, so let's also do that. Um, enter the golden gate. Exit the golden. Um, and then. You can also start to organize your information by clicking these toggles, as you've seen me do. You can also add uh, more cards, and similarly to the card step, you can also add uh, file URLs, uh, variables, um, and descriptions like you can do with cards. Um, and then finally, you can also uh, organize how your buttons lay out, and I'll show you how that looks like in a second, and you can also add no match and no replies. But I'll show you all of that in a second. But before we do that, let's just delete that card that we just created. Um, and you can see that each one of these can be um, configured and dropped down. For the sake of organization, I'm going to leave these dropped uh, cascaded. So let's just see this in action. Let's start the test from here. And you can see that this information on your prototype test tool um, is now presented in a gallery way, in a, in a carousel format, essentially. And this becomes very powerful um, as opposed to just using cards where it will pre be presented in a cascaded linear fashion. Um, you can actually start to get a little bit more sophisticated and powerful with carousels. Um, finally, what you can also do with your button layout is that um, right now it's available as, as a carousel, but you can actually configure it as a list. Um, and then you can actually test this in a, in, in a different format. So let's see that in action. 
And you can see now that this, your carousels present in a different format, in a list format, where you actually get it as a linear list, but you're also able to, able to have the buttons more uh, presented more dynamically. So if you want to have, have a little bit more of a functional uh, carousel format rather than the visual one, this is one option uh, available. Uh, I'm going to configure it back to the uh, carousel format. And you can also uh, configure how you want your carousels to be presented in your project by default. So future carousel steps that you add to the canvas will also be uh, behaving depending on the default that you've, you've, uh, you've set. And then finally, just like of many other steps on our canvas, you can add no matches and no replies. So for example, if in your, uh, if in your um, conversation, in your carousel, the user does not click one of your buttons or does not respond to one of your buttons, you're actually able to have handling around it. Um, so if they don't click your buttons, um, no worry, you can have a no match um, selected. So let's just see that in action really quickly. Uh, you did not press a button. Perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do is start test from here again. And I'm going to say blah. And you're going to see that the no match uh, triggered. Uh, so really powerful ways to get more sophisticated with your conversations using visual and image uh, based content, using carousels and, and, and content. And you can see that this uh, has now reappeared in, on your canvas in terms of um, the carousel. So uh, have fun creating with this. Uh, powerful steps using both card and carousels. Um, and you can get really dynamic with it, as you can see in some of these examples, presenting different options for purchasing, um, for shopping. Uh, very, very endless experiences with it. You can present users with uh, visual options uh, in your carousels. Um, see you in, the, in another video.